Good afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this video. Welcome back to our exploration through polynomials and curve sketching. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning to understand that if factors multiplied together equal zero, for a specific value of x, at least one of the factors must also equal zero at that value of x, so that I can identify zeros of polynomial functions written in factored form. I'll know I've got it when I can find the zeros of a function from its factored form. So in this particular notice and wonder, I'd like for you to take special attention to the algebraic notation that we have for each graphical representation and how it corresponds to the behavior of the graph. You should notice there are some similarities between these three algebraic expressions and their subsequent graphs. If you don't, no worries, that's what we're here for. So let's get two notices and two wonders so that way you can generate some conversation with your classmates. Okay. Now, in each of these examples, and we have eight in total, we need to find all the values of x that make the equation true. A long time ago, you were introduced to this product called the zero product property. Which said, if you're multiplying two or more terms together, but the final product is zero, at least one of them had to equal zero. Now back then, in Algebra 1, components were individualized, right? So it was very intuitive, 2 times 0 is 0, so therefore x was 0. Now, in pre-calculus, we have algebraic expressions. But it works very similarly, where we're going to ask ourselves, what value of x makes this binomial expression equal to 0? Intuitively, you might be able to just determine, oh, well, it's negative 4, if not. You can create miniature equations, which then allow us to algebraically determine what the values are. Now, these values that we're going to be calculating, since all of these expressions are written in factored form, These values tell us the x-intercepts, which you'll hear me commonly refer to as the zeros or factors of a polynomial. So make your way through the next few. Many of them over time, you should be able to determine intuitively, so there won't be any need for um, algebraic reasoning. But a few of them, more so on this page here, will require you to use some algebraic manipulation in order to determine what those values are. After you're done doing that, I'd like for you to construct your own equation that is true when x is equal to negative 5, 4, or 0, and for no other values of x. So these are the three factors or zeros of the polynomial. Now it is your turn to work backwards. You now have the answers per se, and you need to create the original equation for both of these situations, except for part two. We need one side of the equation to be a fourth degree polynomial. 
you should take a good hard look at a situation like this to help you create your fourth degree polynomial that still satisfies the constraints written. Lastly, we're going to tie this idea of algebraic notation and the graphical representation, right? Create that harmony, that bridge that we're looking for. And based on the graphs, oops, that is definitely not, well, it might be, who knows, right? But based on what we're reading, the algebraic notation will be matching it up with the various graphs that we have uh, pictured here, as you can see, okay? Um, there are more uh, equations and text than there are graphs. So you're going to have to read through everything um, and decide to isolate things and where to group things accordingly before pausing, where we'll pick up together during class.